Math 213 lab students. Uh, here is a little bit for your part two review on probability basics. Uh, this should help with the uh, lab assignment for this week. So let me go over ahead and uh, share my screen and we'll take a look at some of this detail. <clears throat> All right, right there we go. Part two review, probability basics, some chapter five uh, work examples. Uh, I really want to focus on the language here. It's really not arithmetic or mathematics, even it's pretty basic there. Uh, but the detail is really important uh, when it comes to the language. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. <clears throat> In terms of an outline, we're going to review basic definitions and complementary events. <clears throat> we're going to introduce the notion of a probability distribution and include some basic examples. This is going to support your uh, good work in the part two review, probability basics in your math 213 lab assignment. So, <clears throat> definitions. Uh, I'll remind people that an event is any collection of results or outcomes of a procedure, such as the outcome when you flip a coin or have a baby. <clears throat> now, a simple event and is one that cannot be further reduced. When you flip that coin, it's either going to come up heads or tails. That's, it's either one or the other. Neither one of those can be further reduced. It never lands on its edge, nothing like that. <clears throat> and I'll also remind you that a simple uh, sample space is a list of all possible simple events uh, from a given procedure. <clears throat> and I'll go ahead and point those things out as we go through our examples. Uh, we're really going to focus on the notion of a complementary event because that's going to help us frame a lot of our questions uh, in chapter five and beyond. So for a given event A, the complementary event A bar <coughs> consists of all those simple events that are not in A. So here's our first example. According to a recent survey, 64% of Hartnell freshmen take English 1A their first semester. The first question is, what percentage of students do not take English 1A the first semester? So it's really not about the students that take the class at all. It's about those that do not take the class. <clears throat> those are two simple events. You either take it or you don't take the class. So in this case, the event A is taking English 1A that freshman semester, <clears throat> while the complementary event, the A bar, is not taking English 1A in your first semester. <clears throat> Either you do or you don't, it's 100% of all those results enable us to determine the percentage of students who do not take English 1A the first semester. We merely subtract the 64% from the 100%. But notice all the words that go along with this. Here's another question. 59% of students <clears throat> passed that English 1A class. What percentage did not pass? Well, if our event B is to pass the English 1A, <clears throat> event B bar is not to pass English 1A. Maybe you fail, maybe you uh, get an incomplete, maybe you drop. In any case, event B is not passing. You either pass or you do not pass, one or the other. <clears throat> so here again, 100% minus the 59% that do pass give you the 41% that don't. You'll notice between the uh, two events, you get 100% of the outcomes. Here's a second example. <clears throat> In this case, we have a random probability distribution. We're making random guesses on a four question multiple choice exam. Each question has three possible choices. You could pick A, you could pick B, you could pick C. <clears throat> now, our random variable X is going to stand for the number of correct guesses. <clears throat> so, I could make anywhere from zero through four correct guesses. Those are the probabilities for each of those particular outcomes. <clears throat> and we'll be working with this distribution uh, for the balance of the presentation here. You'll notice that those uh, probabilities add up to one, and you'll also notice they all fall between zero and one inclusive, as any good probability should. So <clears throat> here's our first question, what percentage of the exams have at least two correct responses? <clears throat> the first issue is, well, we don't really have percentages at all. We've got decimal values. I can convert to percentages by moving that decimal two places to the right. So not a hard uh, conversion to make. So that's the uh, percentages. <clears throat> what percentage of the 
exams have at least two correct response. At least two means two or more. <clears throat> In this case, the event A is two or more correct. Two, three, or four fall into that category. So the percentage of outcomes with those correct responses <clears throat> can be found by summing those percentages, 40.7%. The complementary event. Well, the complementary event is a step that is not <clears throat> two or more correct. That's the complementary event. A bar is less than two correct responses. <clears throat> what do we have on our table that falls into that particular definition? And what percentage of responses is accounted for by that complementary event? <clears throat> Zero or one responses. That's the complementary event. You can see the sample space there on the left and you can see our uh, sets or events on the right. If I sum those percentages I get 59.3 percent or I could have subtracted 40.7 percent from the 100 percent. Either way we're going to get to the same result. And you'll note <clears throat> between those two events it really covers the entire sample space. And that's really the notion of an event and the complementary event. All those simple events are taken up by one or the other of those two events. <clears throat> now, my final example uh, to help you on your way here is to focus on the English language aspect of the questions. This is where it really gets a little tedious. Why? Because, well, English is a tedious little language. Lots of different ways to say lots of different things. So <clears throat> we're going to consider our probability distribution there. Now, at least three correct, at least three correct. That's three or more. So there we go. Those are the outcomes where we have at least three correct. No more than one correct. No more than one. This is what I mean about the funkiness of the language. That means up to and including one, but no further. No more than, but you do get to the one. No more than one correct, it's zero or one correct. Less than two correct. Zero or one correct again. You'll notice that the last two uh, define identical uh, sets of outcomes. One more, at most two correct. So up to and including two, but no more. At most two correct. We can play other games with the English language. I really try to be uh, very basic. I like to use more than, less than, at least, and at most, almost exclusively uh, on my exam questions. <clears throat> and that does help uh, clean up the language a bit. So, a bit of a summary. You've reviewed those basic uh, definitions uh, for events and complementary events. We've taken a look at a probability distribution and we've included some appropriate examples. So this really should help you with the review and uh, in turn that will help you interpret uh, the material in chapter five. At least that is my hope. Anyway, uh, we'll see you later. <clears throat> That's the end here. I'm going to stop sharing. I'll say goodbye to my Math 213 Lab for Statistics students, and I will ask that you come visit uh, in my regular office hours with your questions. Thank you.